So we're here today in the central Israeli town of Lod. It's home to about 80,000 residents. What makes it unique is that among those, about 30% are Arab Muslims. It's one of the country's great mixed ethnicity towns. But sadly, in May of 2021, this town took the country by surprise when it emerged as the epicenter of the intercommunal violence that came to characterize that conflict. That's what brought us here today. Among all the issues, top of mind for people in the country is a fear of a return of that violence, once again ahead of elections. Living side by side in a contested land is a challenge for local residents of Lod that people in much of the country don't experience in quite the same way. And this coexistence is clearly nothing to take for granted. We went to talk with an organization that makes it their mission to foster peace, the Abraham Initiative. The Abraham Initiative's goal is to promote coexistence and equality between Jews and Arabs in Israel. Unfortunately for us, it came as no surprise. The organization warned about the deep inequality in the mixed cities long before. What happened in May 2021, it all completely exploded. There were other contributing factors, the event on the Temple Mount, Operation Guardian of the Walls, and so on. Following these events, we initiated an appeal to the state audit with legislators Mosiraz of Meretz party to examine the gaps and inequalities in the mixed cities. The state audit accepted their request and also decided to check the police action in the mixed cities. The report that came out in July indicated deep gaps and neglect for years of the Arab community. There is a deep inequality in resources, education, welfare, and services provided, even in the public areas, in a sense that would make the Arab community feel like this is their city as well. This problem, this tension, is not just here. It exists under the surface everywhere in the country, but more so in the mixed cities. Is there a concern about the say? Netanyahu forming a right-wing government again around here? Is that something that is a concern to you and, and, and people who are trying to keep the peace around here? I think the fear is when the violent and radical talk becomes legitimate, not specifically Netanyahu or other political figures, but it's scary. If you tell a lie enough times, people start believing it. There is a great despair. They don't vote. We're now talking about 40 percent that are expected to vote this election, maybe even less. It is a new law that means distrust. The country can't afford to have 20% of its citizens in despair. The Arab community doesn't vote because they are hopeless. I'm sick after five elections going back again and again without any change. We saw that even when someone emerged that was willing to give everything up, nothing came of it. Rassan Munayr emerged to us as a key unofficial figurehead of the local Arab community. He was born in its old section and still lives next door to the iconic mosque and Orthodox church that share this location. He met us there to share his perspectives and give us insight to how the Arab sector in Lod sees the situation ahead of another round of elections. People are bitter, angry. The anger didn't fade. No one attended to fix the root of this anger that caused this uprising. Many claim that were riots here, but this is not true. People went out to protest calmly, and we were the ones who got attacked. There's complete lack of trust towards the police. The police treats us like the enemy, and not a citizen who needs to be provided a service. As a citizen, I want to fulfill my citizenship. I request full rights. As a law-abiding citizen, I want the country that was claimed to be not my country, to give me my full rights. We're going back to the ballot box, so where's your vote going? I don't vote for the hypocrites to get nothing back. I will vote for someone who is safeguarding our identity and will cherish it, will teach it, and with that will also demand my civil rights. We used to say there is left and right. We know now that this doesn't exist. There's only right. There's a right that is up front, like Ben Gvir, who is a fascist. And there's a nice type of right that the politics and ideas are the same. The country is stuck by one man, Netanyahu, for five elections. This cost the country 18 billion shekels. All problems would have been solved if Netanyahu took Sarah to a vacation in the U.S. But while Rassan is speaking for one demographic of the city, 
More than 34% of residents voted for the Likud party the last time around. It wasn't hard to find them. I vote for Bibi because I won't change. I'm sick of all the mess and all that is happening here. Kulam Bibi. Kulam Bibi? All of us vote Bibi. All of us vote Bibi. One after the other. If one is not voting for Bibi, we kick him. Not in Lod. Go to Ramad Gan, Herzliya, Tel Aviv, Lod, Ramla. Vote only for Bibi. He's a genius. We are ranked fifth in the world in imparting education, number eight in the world in economic systems. He brought us to the top. The only problem is the people from Tel Aviv. They are snotty. I was born here. This is what it is. The Tel Avivians are Ashkenazis. They want it all to themselves. They talk bad. I've lived here for 64 years. I don't care. Netanyahu, not Netanyahu. I'm an idealist. I vote for the right wing, not the left. No doubt, I vote for Netanyahu. Lord, Ramla, Ber Yaakov, Bat Yam. For all voting for Netanyahu, we want the right wing, the Likud. We don't want the current government. Lieberman just raised taxes even before the war in Ukraine. We surrendered to Hezbollah with all their threats. They will bomb our gas rigs. We got scared and gave them what they wanted. I don't want guns with Netanyahu, and all will be good. So you don't want to see Netanyahu back in power? There's a saying in Arabic, black dog, white dog, at the end of the day, both are dogs. The one who destroyed the most houses in the West Bank, the most killing in the West Bank, is Lapid. For the past year and a half, Lapid and Gantz, they are no better than Netanyahu. This city's part of the political heartland for certain parties, and a sizable percentage of the town's residents are from the former Soviet Union making it a strong bastion also for Avigdor Lieberman's Israel Beitenu party. So we sat down with the local chair to discuss the big picture. As you noticed, this is a right-wing city. And Likud, as many other cities in Israel, due to the stability of former governments, for 12 years led by former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. So it's a given that there are many Likud supporters. The second largest party here is Israel Beitenu, and I'm representing in Lod, led by Minister of Finance Evigdor Lieberman. As we said in the last election, and we say now, we will not sit with Benjamin Netanyahu. We have no issues with the Likud party. We have one problem with one man. If he decides to retire from politics, we see the Likud as a natural partner. How did the events of May of 2021 affect people when they went to vote? People remember and understand what happened here. It's an open wound. A year is not enough to restore the trust between the Jewish and Arab communities. We all hope that this was a one-time occurrence and will not happen again. We all want coexistence. The city belongs to all of us, as is the country. For better or worse, we have to live together and find a common ground. This is why steps were taken to ensure the safety and peace of the streets. Will there be any surprises this election? Unfortunately, I don't think there will be any surprises. Nothing will change. As many in Israel say, these elections are unnecessary. It was better if the current government was still in power for at least a year to execute all the reforms and processes it started. I hope a new government will be formed and we will not be in the same cycle in the sixth election, which are so expensive, when this money could have been used for the populations that desperately need them. The scars and loss from the conflict of May 2021 run deep here, and the shock of that moment still reverberating throughout our small country. From what I can tell, no one here wants the violence to return, yet no one can be sure that it won't. There's still much to address between the residents here and across Israel, and again, to the ballot box we go.